Hey guys, Danny Johnson here, and today I'm going to show you some really cool features on the newer GM trucks. Uh, this includes the Yukon, the Tahoe, the Suburban, Escalade, Sierra, Silverado, and pretty much from 2015 forward. One of my favorite features is the hidden compartment behind the screen. So that's what this button does, so when you push it, it will open up, and inside it even has a place to charge your phone with a USB, so that's very helpful. It can also be locked during valley mode. Okay, on the visor, it will actually slide out. So that's very helpful. If you wanna turn the accessories on, but not the car, hold the push button down with your feet off of the pedal. After holding it for about five, 10 seconds, everything will come on. This allows you to put the car into neutral if you need to roll it somewhere. It allows you to mess with the radio. Um, basically everything that you would need by turning the car to accessory if it didn't have the push button start. This car has the dual climate control so you can change the temperature on the driver's side and you can change it on the passenger side individually. And even in the back, you can have three different temperatures going on. Uh, but if you want it all to be the same, instead of cycling through it all, all you do is hit this sync button and watch all of these sync to the driver. So now they all say 63. And now when I move them, this one can still go individually. And this one can still move individually as well. But when you press the sync button, and they all go back to the driver one. Now the driver one will control all three at the same time. So you can have it all the same or individual. Now for the turn signals, if you push it and hold it all the way down, of course it'll stay on for as long as that's down. But if you barely tap it, it will go three times just for changing lanes. And if you have tow haul mode on, now when you barely tap it, it will do six times. So at the end of the shift lever, there's a button here for the tow haul mode, which is what that little trailer symbol is for. And so when you push it, your battery volts will swap out and it'll now show you the transmission temperature. So now you're in tow haul mode and the little symbol will come up for the little trailer as well. For the window buttons, if you push it down slightly, just barely, the window will only roll down as much as you're pushing it. But if you push the button all the way, it will auto roll down. And the same rolling it back up. So you have an auto roll feature. If you have one, there's a trailer brake controller here. And I have a whole video on how that works. But basically just by pushing it, you can change the gain um, basically, which indicates how hard you want the brakes to come on for the trailer. Or by sliding this in, it will manually apply the trailer brakes if the trailer has them. For the sunroof, it will open if you barely push this down, only as much as you want it to, or if you push it until it clicks, it will auto scroll. So these buttons are for the memory seating. Put the seat where you want it and hold the button down and it will lock it into that. And it's also uh, keyless entry specific. So we'll put it into my wife's position, as you'll see. And now when I unlock the car with mine, everything will change back, including where I had the mirrors set. On this keyless entry, as soon as you hit the lock button and hold it, it will fold the mirrors in. Now on unlocking it, it will do the same. It will unfold the mirror, and if you keep holding it down, the windows will roll down. By going into settings and hitting valet mode, you can type a four digit code and then lock this. So we're gonna re-enter it again to verify that it's the same number. And then when it locked, 
you'll notice <laughs> none of the radio will work or many of the uh, features uh, for looking at the oil timer or fuel economy or anything like that. So this is something you can put on to also keep your kids from blasting the radio if you don't trust them as they drive. It does still give you a heated steering wheel. To adjust the mirrors, you'll hit one of these for each different side. And then in the middle, when you push this button, the mirrors will fold in. So that's very helpful. Down here, you also have locks for the rear windows and for the child lock. So if you do the child lock, now they cannot open the door from the inside on both sides. To turn on your fog lights, you'll actually push this button in. And so you'll see the symbol for fog lights, which is the green headlight bulb that will come on and off. It's also a way for the running lights, as you can see, to turn on and off. You can turn the headlights on manually, or if you push it over and let go, it will turn the automatic headlights off. But it only does that every time you get in the vehicle. So the next time you turn the car on, if it, it will automatically go to auto. For the tow package, it comes with a seven pin connector, which is really nice. And the automated trailer brake controller as well as part of that. Behind this cover, you'll pull, you'll twist and pull these tabs down and you actually have your tow package. There's an automatic dimming feature for all of the gauges in the infotainment center. It's covered up here, so as soon as you take this off, you'll notice as soon as it recognizes the sunlight, it will get brighter. For voice control and talking on the phone, you'll notice that there are little speakers throughout. And they're all over the car so that other people can also talk on the phone and everybody can listen. The rear seats can be folded down simply by pushing a button and also brought back up. Now there's also one here to fold down the front seats. But they have to be manually brought back up. There's also a button right here to fold down the seat, which pulls this handle. And if you push it again, it will also open so that you can get in. There's also a little strap here that you pull that lifts that handle. Underneath the vehicle, there's sensors. So if you swipe your foot, it will automatically open or close the lift gate. One of my favorite features are the heated and cooled seats. However, they do not work with the car off. And even if you hold it into accessory mode and push the button down, they still don't work, which I think they should, because if you're on the side of the road, you know, freezing out of gas, it should at least keep you warm. But uh, anyway, with the car running, there's a few options. Cooled seats, which is basically just a fan and every time you hit the button, it will go to the different level. And same with heated seats, and you have either the bottom and top part of the seat in its different levels, or just the back of the seat with its different levels. Also, a steering warmer, which is really nice. It feels really nice in the winter to have a warm, heated steering wheel. If you're tired of your kids changing the air conditioning in the back, you can uh, lock it, basically, with a control lock. And so then they can't change the settings back there. Uh, you can also turn it on and off from back here. With the rear control lock off, you can uh, turn the air conditioning up and down from here, change the temperature, and it will affect only the back 
You also have heated seats on the two outer seats. An SD card, USB, and accessories here. With the volume for headphones, it looks like. Up here, there's a mirror if you push on that, and there's a place to hide your sunglasses up here too, but you also have a rear mirror so you can keep track of the kids in the back. These buttons are for a built-in garage door remote, which is very handy, and you can program it for multiple uh, doors if you want. If you want the lights to come on and off when you're getting in the car, you have off, door, which means that it will only open when the door is on, or on, and these are LEDs. And so these will actually turn on and off um, as well. If you leave them on too long, they do automatically turn off, which is a nice feature. The key fob has a hidden key on it. There's a button on the side that you push. And so when you push that button down, you can then slide a key out. And this key can be used in three places. Number one is in the glove box to lock the glove box. Number two is in the driver's side door handle. Behind this tab for the spare tire. I have a full video on how to drop the spare tire down. It's a little more complicated than you'd think, so I'll put that in the video description. You also have a remote start. You hit lock and then hold this button down and it will start the vehicle. And you can also turn it off that way. Also, double clicking this button will open the rear uh, hatch and close it. And hitting this button twice will pop the rear glass. If you have your key fob in your pocket when you walk up to the vehicle, you can lock and unlock the vehicle with this button. Um, this one will only unlock the driver. This one will unlock all doors. Now, if you get out of the car with the key fob, it will honk three times to let you know that the key fob is no longer in the car and it can't detect it. It will also do the same thing if it thinks that you've left the key in the car. Now, I also did a video a while back about what happens if you drive away without your key fob once the car's already running, and it will still run. It's just the next time you turn it off, you'll need it to operate it, but it will drive pretty much as far as you drive the next time without turning it off without the key fob. So if the key fob is near the car and a cat walks under the back, it will automatically open the hatch. And so if you don't want anything like that to happen, there is a control here, and you can turn the rear... Uh, lift gate to three quarters only or off and so uh, there's also ways to set it to a perfect height and I'll put the link to that in the video description as well okay these trucks have what's called grade braking which will use the transmission to slow the car down on hills especially when it's in tow haul mode if you don't want that on you just hold the tow haul button down and after about 10 seconds to let go and it will turn the grade braking off. Also, you have hill assist. So if the vehicle feels like it's on a hill, uh, it will automatically stop it. Uh, so as you're starting to drive away, it won't roll back. And so here's the hill start assist uh, logo, for example. So basically what would happen is uh, if I'm on a little bit of a hill now and I let go of the brake, the vehicle will stay stationary until I start to drive.
It also has cylinder deactivation, so you'll see right here it's in V8 mode. And if you're driving around and it uh, senses that uh, it, there's not a lot of load on the car, it will go to a V4 mode. Now a feature I want to talk about, especially if it doesn't work, is you have your video feature here to play videos and uh, the screen that folds down. But if it stops working, then sometimes you have to press media, go back into the home button, and then push on the video again to get the sound to come up. Now we'll watch this auto dimming. Your headlights will automatically come on as soon as it realizes it's in the shade. So there goes the headlights and then it dimmed the instruments uh, quite a bit. Now as you exit a lane, uh, if you don't have your turn signal on, the seat will vibrate on which side you're exiting the lane and then you'll get uh, a notification. So you'll notice as you go out of the lane, it'll tell you and the seat will actually vibrate. I don't know if you can hear it. Uh, there it is. It'll vibrate on what side of the lane that you're departing. You also have a timer for how long the headlights will stay on until you get out of the car, and so you can actually adjust that to uh, um, different levels. A really cool feature for towing, especially, is when you put a load on the back and it weighs down the suspension, there's a little electric pump that will turn on and it will actually lift the suspension back up. And so you'll hear that click on and off too, if it ever notices that the suspension level is too low. There are USB ports inside the center console, inside this part here. They're everywhere. There's a strip of red LED lights in here, so if you're headed towards something like an obstacle and it senses that you're going to crash, it'll light up. There's a charge dock here to put your phone on, but it doesn't fit a lot of bigger phones. When you're in reverse, it's really nice because as an obstacle comes from one side or the other, like a pedestrian or a truck, it will flash and show you where it's coming from. Also, you have the blind spot detection here that will light up, and if you turn your turn signal on while it's activated, it will flash at you. So for example, here's a van that's coming forward. It's in my blind spot. If I hit the turn signal, it'll flash at me. And again, as you're backing up, your seat will vibrate and it'll warn you if there's anything that you're gonna hit. The side mirrors have a really cool self-dimming feature, so when they get a light on them. Okay, there's a ton of features here. As you can see, you use these circle buttons, you use the check mark and these arrows. And so basically, for example, we're gonna go left arrow over, and you have uh, information, you have audio, phone, navigation and settings. When you go into settings, you can actually change the this, uh, the whole display. So here's standard. If you hit the right arrow, you have technology and media. And so all these different features, as you hit the check mark, will change the whole look. So as you can see now, uh, this has a different look to the middle of it. And so when we go back to our information, it now has a whole different look and it, what you notice is you still have fuel and temperature but you do lose the battery and some other ones when you hit tow haul on the end of the shift selector you do get more of those options back in with transmission temperature and oil pressure um, but you don't want to drive around in tow haul mode all the time because it changes the uh, shift settings and everything for the transmission and you don't get quite as good gas mileage Okay, so going back to these pages, left arrow, what you'll notice if you go down into settings and you scroll down, it will say nine out of 12 pages. So when you hit uh, the right arrow on that, it shows you all of the different screens that are currently being used. And so trip A, trip B, fuel range, everything in red is being used as you can see. So if you have a other ones that you want like the fuel used and timer now you hit the check button and see how on the left it went red 
and so now it's selected and speed limit you can click on that one it'll show you speed limits engine hours so there's all these different pages that you can go through and select so now we're using the left arrow and we're going we have all 12 of 12 pages so left arrow again we're going to go up to info and as you scroll through now we have them all so the first one shows the speed with your mileage uh, then it shows you two different trips trip a and trip b with their fuel economy as you keep arrowing down fuel range and this has the v8 mode or v4 which will tell you instantly what your economy is and which mode you're in oil life time for an oil change um, it also has um, tire sensor but I have 2019 wheels on so none of them are reading I have to get new sensors for that uh, fuel mileage uh, as you're driving and so fuel used uh, so it'll tell you a total amount of fuel that has been used and then a timer Let's see speed limit and right now it doesn't know where we are or anything so it doesn't have anything there uh, your trailer brake controller four-wheel drive mode which shows you your departure angle uh, how if you turn the steering wheel notice how it'll the steering wheel the actual wheels turn on that and shows you your 20 degrees turning to the right and it'll give you a, the also the tilt of the car if it's uh, left or right tilting also when you go into four-wheel drive mode It will change that so now it says that it's in four-wheel drive and as you may have seen uh, this is now all a solid color because all of it's on there so let me go back to two-wheel drive and we'll show the difference here so notice how the front axle disappeared or it went to a light gray instead of a solid gray so that's kind of a neat feature Um, engine hours total and idle hours so you know how long the car is idled in its life and then a blank page so those are all the different pages so there's a lot of information in here music you have an audio one a phone one again a navigation and all that so those are the different modes in fact if we go to settings and we're gonna go back up to technology. We'll go to media. So there's a media one that focuses more on music and it changes the look of this as well. And again, this one only gives you two gauge options, your fuel and temperature. So um, I actually like the standard one, which you've probably seen as the car comes with. You have oil pressure, engine temperature, fuel and battery or your, your charge and then when you push the turn stock of course you can also get a temperature gauge for the transmission okay so we'll go back to scrolling down here we have all 12 pages selected speed warnings and then um, websites to go to so you can change from US units also um, and just uh, there's a lot of small things in there that we won't really get into so hopefully you enjoyed this video please check the playlist in the video description i have tons of videos on this yukon and how to activate the features uh, how to fix common problems with it towing reviews all kinds of things so uh, please check for that if you're new to the channel feel free to subscribe and if you have any questions then let me know thanks for watching